It's 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023, and we're moving the cows to the <coughs> third cell of the sixth section. We expect rain uh, in the early hours of this of the morning tomorrow. We expect rain around 11 and 12, and then again in the evening. So my plan is I'll move them in the morning, and then I'll give them a double section uh, so that I won't have to move them in the evening because I don't want to come out here in the rain. It looks like we're still getting about an inch and a half of rain, maybe two inches over the next couple days. So that might mark uh, the end of the drought, at least a lessening of the drought. I've been watching some of my videos and I noticed that I'm always like huffing and puffing. Um, the, there's a couple reasons why. Number one is I'm out of shape. And number two is I have asthma. It's just something I live with. I don't take any medicine for it or anything. And out here there's a lot of dust and it kind of kicks the asthma up a little bit. But just walking around, you know, kind of wears me out a little bit. I'm, I'm just out of shape and this is part of the reason why I do this is to get back in shape. Not that I've ever been in shape in my whole life. But certainly my back pain has decreased a lot since I've started doing this. Um, I had to recognize the difference between back pain and just muscle soreness, which is often the same thing. And uh, the muscle soreness, if it's caused by exercise, really you got to keep exercising, you can't stop. But lately I've been incorporating a lot of stretches. And um, the stretches I hold for about 30 seconds, um, I think if I can increase my flexibility it might help with my mobility so that I won't uh, irk my back. But uh, one of my goals is to get back into weight training. I really enjoyed weight training. Beat the heck out of me. Made me feel terrible. Worst that I've ever felt in my life. But you can't argue with the results. Um, yeah. It's kind of nice in your day-to-day -day life knowing that the things that are heavy aren't heavy for you. <laughs> you know. So, anyway, the grass here isn't that great. It's, it's really not good. There's a couple spots where it's okay, but I'm feeling pretty bad for the cows. Um, and if the next sections are bad too, I'll probably just plan on putting hay out here or the next time they're here in this section. Um, I'll roll out hay in the first section they graze and give them access to it throughout the half week. It takes them about a half week to, to go through a, a bale of hay when I unroll it. So. <clears throat> so my daughter made the comment that my puppy, um, not me, she's not a puppy, she's like two years old now, but she, uh, she's a dog, that she uh, is walking funny. And that to me is the sign that the puppies are coming close. Of course, I know nothing about this, but there you go. Anyway, hey sheep. Yeah, when the puppies are born, we're gonna wean them when it's time to wean them and bond them with the sheep as quickly as possible. Have the sheep bond with them and I'm gonna leave them together for a long time. I'll have to move them probably every three days um, you know using nets but uh, first goal will be to train them on the electric net so they know not to touch it second goal will be to um, start moving them together in the field and uh, once they're old enough and we're, we're going to be really careful not to bond with them at all but uh, my daughter was making comments. The snowball looks pretty nice. Looks like he's a, he has a nice coat. So maybe we'll bring snowball's genetics in here too. You know, see what that does. But yeah, breeding dogs. Um, and I know that there's a big risk if you don't buy a sheepdog that's already trained when the sheepdogs that are untrained 
they might go after the sheep when they get a little older so we'll see hopefully they'll learn the instinct will be strong enough to do the right thing so this ground is cracked every once in a while I'll see a giant black spider crawl in the cracks trapdoor spiders There's remarkably few grasshoppers out here. I just don't see them. And the fly count seems to be low. Lower. Yeah, I just don't see the, the grasshoppers. They're all gone. Fly count is way down too. This is where I put um, the parasitic wasps last. I remember I ran up like near this, near this, uh, this wire. Probably right where I'm standing. I look for patties. Probably one of these patties was a patty I was looking for. Um, and I, I just dropped them on there. Um, so hopefully the parasitic wasps will... Uh, look at that. That's soil. The parasitic wasps will lay their eggs in the larva of the flies. Uh, thus killing the flies. And helping the parasitic wasps to reproduce. So... Yeah. That's what the poop looks like. That's what it should look like. It should just turn into dirt. This one, uh, how old is that? What is that? Well, this one's all dried out. That one's three weeks old too. Yeah, I guess that one was too dry for the, uh, <coughs> the dung beetle to do their job. This one's dried out too. Cow chips, they call them cow chips, that's right. You can burn them. When they dry out like that, you can burn them. It's fuel. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh, that, there's a grasshopper. Little tiny, itty bitty baby one. Alright, guys, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye bye.